Hello everyone! Say you want to find a number such that when you multiply it by itself, you get negative 1. How would you go about finding this number? Of course, you could take the square root, but the square root of negative 1 doesn't exist, does it? One way to solve this problem is to look at the number line. If you want to go forward on the number line, all you have to do is go forward. But if you want to go backward, you have to multiply by negative 1. Or you could rotate by 180 degrees. In other words, the negative sign just means rotate by 180 degrees and go in that direction. To get a number that is equal to the square root of negative 1, we need a new kind of number. And I am going to call this number I. We need it to be such that if you multiply it by itself, you rotate 180 degrees or half a circle. But if you just have it by itself, it's rotated only 90 degrees. Instead of a line, which is one-dimensional, we can look at a graph, which has two intersecting axes. If we want to find this point, or plot it, all we have to do is go over 2, rotate by 90 degrees, and go up 3. Now, to name this number, we could call it 2 plus i times 3, or 2 plus 3i. The real problem with imaginary numbers is the name. Real and complex brings to mind difficult and hard to work with when in reality, these numbers are just as easy to work with as any other kind of number. What we need to do is call these numbers compound, representing adding two different kinds of numbers, the regular and the other kind, which we should call lateral, representing the vertical nature of these numbers. Getting back to the title of this video, which has to do with zero being real or imaginary, let's, let's try to figure that out. If a number is on the real axis, it's a real number. If a number is on the imaginary axis, then it's an imaginary number. But there's a number right here where they intersect, and that number would have to be both real and imaginary, right? And that number is zero. So zero is both real and imaginary. Thanks for watching. To get a number that's equal to the square root of negative 1, we need a new number. And I am going to call this number I.